it was a minerals prospect. It was an area that's known for copper nickel exploration activity. And uh, what we see in the left is the gravity retrieved from the FTG. And this is the magnetic data that we also that we acquired simultaneously. Uh, when you look at this, the gravity is a very positive de high density ridge for all intents and purposes. Mm -hmm. You just call it a gravity ridge. It's linear, it's, it's expressive, it's detailed, it's quite focused. And then you look at the magnetics. And on the flanks of this gravity ridge, we get magnetic anomaly, linear patterns. So straight away, we are identifying a complicated structure that's creating that signature pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, part of it is dense and part of it is magnetic. It's not all magnetic or all dense. And, uh, but, and then uh, you move eastwards, you get these linear gravity highs, but they have very minimal magnetic response. Mm -hmm. So that's something, a different A totally different event. Again. Yeah. So do, so the geologists oh. know this sort of work data to have at their disposal because they can bring in what they know uh, to, to constrain and, and, and pin down some of those anomalies. And then they might see other anomalies where they don't have information and they'd be confident about interpreting them as geology from the map data that we present. So it was a great, great success story, this one, because they would have really updated their, their geological maps to proceed with their, their, their exploration activity. What's the, the lithology of the long red stringer? And um, I'm trying to remember, because I, I think it's, um, I, I, to be honest, I can't recall, and I won't admit to what it is, because I've <laughs> been picked up on this. So <laughs> it, it, it was 10 years ago. Yeah, if I can't, I have to dig through the record on that. But uh, it, it was very interesting. Um, I think it's just a, for me, looking at this sort of display is that you see, a, you see coherent signature patterns, they're forming a linear trend, you see a potential for offsets, and you're seeing variable amplitude, and that's geology. It's, it's uh, and the line spacing here would have been about 200 meters. So there's a lot of, there's good sampling on the record, and a lot of detail in the data. And, uh, and, and Incredible. It's, yeah, but even just before, you know, one of the things I learned when I was, um, oh, a long time ago, I remember sitting in the workshops and the like, and learning, uh, interpreting potential field data or mag data or, or gravity is that they said, put your, leave your geology hat out the door, uh, come in with an empty mind and start just drawing lines and, and correlate features, uh, correlate features that look alike and linear patterns and shapes. And then, yeah. you know, together your drawings together at the end and look at it as a geologist. And then start to think, then start defining your geology what's the what it is. Wow. So, so trust the data. Uh, yeah. Just just look at the, the colors and the patterns yeah. and the linear trends. So trust and, the and patterns in those data, in the data absolutely. first, before you even start yeah. to use your geologic interpretation. And then once you then, understand yeah. all those patterns, then you can start being, oh, pick this part in this. Being a geologist, then you start to you start to reason it out then geologically as to the viability of what it might be. Yeah, and, and that might involve referring to other geological information that you that, that you have, but it, it all starts to come together quite quickly, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a good independent, neutral assessment of what you have, yeah. and how to use it more, uh, most proficiently.